<clears throat> this was one of the biggest issues that constantly got me in trouble um not knowing how to properly express myself so in the conversations i would end up getting frustrated and it would end up turning into um, a violent situation so and this is actually important um so it's talking about how a lot of times you'll have and it's talking about like company executives and it's making a point that they may not necessarily be the smartest people in the company but they have better control over their emotions you know they don't have to worry about them having emotional outbursts and stuff like that they can also navigate other people's emotions so that it doesn't cause problems for the company and they can also um effectively de-escalate people so that things doesn't sp don't spin out of control so this is expressing the benefit and the utility of being able to properly control your emotions this is a thing that keeps a lot of uh, relationships for example from never progressing or breaking a relationship apart is the emotional control because you can like everything else about the person but if there is that conflict where um the person has no emotional control um you know and become very uh uh, disrespectful. It, it, it's hard. It's going to be difficult for you to stay into that relationship. And some people will stay in the relationship, but both people end up being miserable. So in that, in those situations, it's generally best to just kind of part ways. How exactly can better emotional control help you? Just in case you're unclear as to why you need be a better handle on your anger, here are just some ways uh, better emotional control can benefit you. Better relationships. If you know how to watch what you say and how to better react to what other to what people say and do around you, chances are your relationships would improve. You would be more patient with people, and guess what? People would be more patient with you. There will be a lot of lot more understanding and you will solve more problems together also you will be able to resolve potential conflicts before they flare up into bigger problems you would know how to get along better and the relationship improves over time so and it's difficult um uh especially when you're dealing with people um and to me it seems Sometimes it's even more difficult to to manage our emotional outbursts with people that we care about than even people that we, you know, kind of sort of like or even people that we don't care about at all. Um, and I can't exactly explain why that is. The only thing that I think of when I uh, think of those situations is that the emotional attacks that we receive from the people that we actually care about obviously are going to hurt more than what we get from people that we could care less about so we end up becoming even more angry uh with them than we do with other people because again when the other people make statements or do certain things we could care less right we don't really um uh, care that much about their opinion and definitely don't care whether they like us or not. Better decisions. Being able to handle your emotions enable you to avoid making rash or impulsive decisions. When somebody says the wrong things to you, it's very easy to feel wounded, threatened, or even humiliated. Your natural tendency would be to push back emotionally. You may say something that would put the other person in their place. You might even get so heated you find it almost irresistible to ball up your fist and smack the other person. So, and, and here's the thing. So when you're angry and you get extremely angry and you continue to allow your anger to escalate out of control, it's similar to being intoxicated, right? Some of you may know or remember, um, uh, they had, a, uh, it was common that people would use the term uh, drunk with rage or something like that, right? And the reason that they would use those type of terms because it, it had a lot of similarities to the person being drunk or intoxicated because you're not thinking clearly, you're not getting proper oxygen to your brain 
And so you, you, you have a tendency to make a rash decision and do something that you wouldn't otherwise uh, normally do if you were thinking uh, in your right mind. Now, this doesn't mean that you don't want to beat the other person up. None of this means that you are immune to the tendency to give the other person a couple slaps because whatever they said hurts you so much. But you decide to go with your better angles. It takes emotional control to take the high road, which is the better decision. And and again, I know when I was young, I would think of, you know, what here is talking about taking a high road, which is kind of walking away from the situation and not continuing to escalate it. It would. Um, uh, I would sometimes look at it as like it was a weakness um, and it's not, you know, it's, it's not a weakness to um, to walk away from the situation and, and, and not put yourself in a bad situation unnecessarily. Better crisis management. Make no mistake about it. If you are very a very emotional person, chances are you will always end up making things worse for yourself and people who depend on you. Whenever a crisis happens, <clears throat> it's like pouring gasoline on charcoal. If you have all these anger and emotional control issues brewing or boiling deep within you, what would seem like a small, easily explained and very manageable crisis can flare up into an uncontrolled disaster. Everything turns into an emergency. So, and, and that's exactly what the situation is. And, and right now, as I'm speaking, you know, it's, um, uh, right now, as I'm making this particular video, it's, uh, November, uh, November, uh, 10th, excuse me, November 11th, uh, 2022. Right. And so this is not long after the, the rapper uh, takeoff was killed. And, you know, all the YouTube videos and stuff that's talking about it is showing that, you know, there was an argument between one of uh, one of his associates and someone else uh, from the other side, something over like stupid stuff. And um, and it ends up turning into gunplay and somebody ends up losing their life. Right. Over uh, something very simple, something that and and if. It wasn't a setup. Um, if you hear what was said or what was being argued about, no one would think that this is something that's going to turn into gunplay. But it did. And someone lost their life. By choosing to deal with your anger issues appropriately, you would be able to get out from under the tendency to make. A crisis worse than they already are. Instead, by focusing on rational, objective and mature decision making, you may be able to control many crises in your life instead of constantly freaking out and running around like a chicken with his head cut off. You would be able to tackle situations in a calm, collected and mature manner. And that's what we want to do. So we get to the point where we want to operate in maturity. And a lot of us, you know, we think it's, you know, being gangster or being hardcore or being tough or whatever, you know, just because we can, you know, punch somebody in the mouth and beat them up. And, and just because you can whoop somebody, you know, don't make you a tough guy. And 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 in reality, you you're putting yourself in danger because everybody's not going to be OK with that butt whooping. You know, it's not like back in the days where you can go out, out, out fight, you know, kind of beat the heck out of each other and, you know, kind of go have a beer later on. Um, nowadays, you know, you got these people. One, they really don't want to fight in the first place. So they're going to try to shoot you. Um, but also, you know, you got to think about, hey, you might run into this individual again when you happen to be walking with your family. Now you've you've made an unnecessary enemy and it's not about being scared. Right. Some of us, you know, it's not really about being scared for your life because, hey, you know what? <clears throat> Nobody gets out of life alive. So, you know, from the day you're born, you're already moving towards uh, dying. So but. Obviously, we don't want to put our family and loved ones in danger. And you have people and it's not like back in the days. I remember uh, back in the days, if you had an issue with someone um, and they happen to see you, right, they catch you. You know, it's on site, but they happen to catch you and you walking with your children or your old lady or your mother or grandmother or something. 
And they weren't going to do nothing. They weren't going to do nothing to you. You weren't going to do nothing to them. You know, you look at each other and you know that, you know, it's on, but you with your family. They might even, you know, greet the family and, and, and speak to them nicely. Right. It was just that type of respect. But that's not the way it is nowadays. Better perspective in any kind of situation that involves conflict it's easy to let your emotions get the better of you because we have overblown and exaggerated perception of what just happened. Now, everybody's entitled to their feelings, but you have to understand that there is such a thing as reality. And a lot of things that people get angry about, you know, I can think of situations with myself where I got angry over things um, and was animate, like super heated about it. And I had totally misunderstood the whole situation. And it has happened reversed against me where somebody, you know, have you know, mistook something that I said. And the thing is too, cause I'm not a very politically correct individual. I don't go with the, the common victim mentality that's being pushed in the media nowadays. So sometimes the things that I say or the way that I say them can sometimes rub people in the wrong way. Right. And so if we're being getting heated about something that somebody said or done, we should at least take the time to see, well, okay, am I off on this? Am I looking at this the wrong way? Or did I misinterpret what the person said? Reality is made up of facts. And if you constantly assume too much, exaggerate, or even blow things out of proportion, don't be surprised if your perception of reality gets skewed. As a result, you end up reacting in the worst possible way to situations that would have otherwise been manageable. And again, we turn the situations into something that we take it out of control. And, and the reality of it is, if it hasn't already turned to where we're already throwing blows or firing shots or stabbing someone or something like that, right? Then it can always be managed, right? It can always be managed, right? But we need to try to de-escalate the situation and not escalate it even further. Um, you know, it don't again, it don't make you gangster or tough or whatever just because uh, you decide to shoot somebody, anybody, a child, children accidentally shoot people, you know, unfortunately all the time. So, you know, they're, they're still a little child. Right. And that's what a lot of us are when we can't properly manage our emotions uh, with the people, especially people that we care about. Right. When we have to flip out and, and you know, call them out of their name and and talk all kind of crap about them and then think that person is supposed to be okay about, uh, you know, okay with it. Right. Because the thing about it is once you said something, you can't unsay it. Right. And that's the danger about, um, you know, letting ourselves get out of control emotionally because we will have a tendency to say and do things that later we feel bad about. Right. And especially again, when it comes to people that we care about, so we feel bad, but you can't unsay it. And that person can't unhear it. So even if the person decides to continue to, to speak to you and talk to you, um, guess what? They still feel a certain way about what you said. And that relationship will never be the same. It's not going to be the same. Even if they choose to continue to mess with you, right? As a, as a friend, as a family member or whatever your relationship is with that person, um, that relationship is not going to be the same. And that will still remain at the back of their mind forever, forever. Right. Um, and especially again, and some people say, well, if they really cared about them, then they would just let it go. No, they let it go by still continuing to function with you. But because of the fact that they actually care, that's why it hurts so much. And that's why they're never going to let it go. You got to realize you just changed the whole dynamic of that relationship where they thought that you were to, you know, one thing. And now when you say what you said or did what you did, now it's all something else, right? That's why the, you know, the issue like cheating and stuff like that, that's, that's what makes that, you know, such a, a, a bad issue. Now, this doesn't mean that these decisions are ideal. There are many situations in life where you just basically have to make do with the best choice given, <clears throat> given the circumstances. Usually, 
these are far from ideal, but it is better a better position than always opting for the worst decision possible. And unfortunately, if you let your emotions get the better of you, that's usually what happens. And the next one, uh, increase self-confidence. Believe it or not, if you are able to control your emotions, your sense of trust in doing the right thing at the right time to produce the right results increase quite a bit. Mm. Nothing's more damaging to self-confidence than the feeling that regardless of what you do, people just have it against you. And, and so again, um, one of the things that keeps us angry also is, is believing or thinking that everybody's out to get us. Everybody's trying to do us wrong. Everybody's trying to uh, hold us back. This is what's so damaging with the, uh, the victim mentality that's pushed in, 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 in the media right now in, in society, um, you know, teaching people that, you know, the reason that you're stuck and the reason that you're not succeeding is because someone else is trying to hold you back and someone else is not letting you get ahead. You know, they're not letting you get the business loans. They're not letting you get the, um, uh, you know, being able to uh, uh, start your own business or being able to, you know, move forward in a positive way. And in reality, it's you. You're the one that prevents yourself from being able to move forward in a positive way and being able to be successful. You're not that weak that someone else can control your destiny. You have control over your destiny if you choose to. But as long as we have no emotional control and we let anger, con you know, our anger control us, then yes, we're going to stay stuck. We're going to stay in the same position that we've always been. And our situation may get increasingly worse as um, as we go about our life. So, you know, it's not somebody else's fault. So uh, another thing we get is the increased self-confidence and the way that this worked for me. Um, again, I grew up as a very angry individual and a, a, um, what's the term? A loose cannon, as they would say. Right. So. You know, other people, you know, would think like, okay, we don't know what this damn fool is going to do. And sometimes I would even think myself, right? I would avoid certain conversations or arguments or involving myself in certain conversations because I'm like, you know what? I don't know how I'm going to act if this person, you know, does or says something, you know, in a certain way. And uh, so I didn't really trust myself. But as I um, began to grow up, Right. And I do mean grow up because that was really childish way of doing things. And as I began to grow up and deal with uh, life in a different manner, um, I began to have more confidence in being able to navigate different situations and even conflicts with people without allowing it to spin out of control. And so I develop a thing. So if you're not, you know, physically trying to harm me, I'm not physically trying to harm you as far as the bullshit that's coming out of your mouth is irrelevant, you know, and I'm able to, to, to maintain that in most situations, but I also don't become complacent and, and just think, Oh yeah, I got this under control because if you allow yourself to, um, you know, not properly taking care of your health, not getting enough sleep, which I never get enough sleep because I'm insomniac and um, you know, you're hungry you know, maybe you're feeling a little bad that day, you're a little tired or whatever, right? You could kind of lose it unexpectedly. Increase self-esteem. Self-esteem really is your opinion about your sense of self, uh, your sense of worth. It's your opinion of whether you are likable enough or whether you are worthy of respect, love, affection, or admiration. If you are a very emotional person and you get angry a lot, it's very easy to internalize the conflict and defense mechanisms you provoke from other people. If people hate being around you because you're, you always fly off the handle and you say the most cutting and damaging things to them, you start absorbing all these. And sooner or later, you start feeling, maybe I'm a bad person. Maybe I'm not worthy. Excuse me. Maybe I'm not worth knowing. Maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe I'm defective and on and on like this. 
So, and, and that is the case that a lot of times people, um, uh, especially if, if people have no control over their mouth, they, they, you know, they let different things, you know, say certain things or do certain things. I mean, I got people that I know, you know, that I, you know, care about like, and stuff like that. But, um, I don't try to spend a lot of time around them and I have a hard time uh, communicating and, and conversating with them for that reason, right? Um, because they don't know how to control the things, you know, that come out of their mouth. And like I said before, you know, once you say certain things, you know, you change the dynamics of your relationship with that person and definitely with me, right? I can let things go to the effect that I'm not going to go and try to, you know, sneak and kill the person, let's say, or beat them up. Right. Um, but, um, I don't forget. And, 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 and even though, again, if I forgive the person, it's, it's, you know, that relationship is, is still not the same. Right. But the self-esteem is huge, right? Because if if I don't have a good opinion about myself, if I think I'm a piece of crap and and um, and I don't think that I'm worthy, right? Then I'm not gonna do the things that are gonna help me to be successful. Because again, I'm thinking that I'm a piece of crap and that I'm not worthy. So I'm gonna keep doing things that are self-destructive, right? And that's what a lot of people have. Uh, issues with anger management. That's that's some of the the self esteem is a big thing, and I think that's worth looking at. And some people say, "Well, I don't have low self. I got high self esteem." But in reality, the person is is happens to be a very arrogant individual. And there's a difference between arrogance and self esteem. Arrogance is generally a sign of low self esteem, where we try to overcompensate for where we're lacking. You get better personal peace, calm, and serenity. The interesting thing about emotional control is that it gives you ownership of who you are deep down inside. It really does. Because a lot of people who have problems with their emotions think that the problem comes from outside. It's other people, excuse me, it's other people saying the wrong things. It's them finding themselves in the wrong situations with the wrong input, it's everybody else's fault, not theirs. So they spend a tremendous amount of time passing the blame to everybody else. <clears throat> and a lot of us believe this way, and I, and I really do believe that this is this is one of the things that's preventing uh, people from from being able to be successful in their life, and especially um, minorities. I'll say minorities as well as the um, the LGBTQ community. Because again, I think in the in the uh, media, you know, we're we're told, or or the situation is created to where um, uh, people are told, oh, they gotta, you know, people gotta be nice. If they're not being nice, then you know, you can go file a lawsuit because somebody talked to you the wrong way or things like that. And I think that people got the wrong perspective. If somebody don't like you, so what, right? And as far as businesses are concerned. Businesses are there to make money. Even someone that that has a business, even if they're a complete freaking racist, right? If you have the skills to make that business money, guess who they're going to hire? You, because you're going to be able to make money. And again, it's not that they like you, right? You can make that person money. So they're going to want to get the money for their business. Um, not only that, you can start your own stuff, right? We, we go out I mean, you'll have people that can sit and they can give you every statistic about every single player on every football, baseball team or whatever. Right. So clearly this, these people are intelligent. They got a mind. They can think. Right. But we don't spend the time trying to um, uh, learn the things that are going to help us to be able to move forward. Right. You know, so. You're saying that, OK, people don't like you. They don't want to give you a shot in their business. So what? You know what? F their business. Right. Go start your own. Do your own thing. Make your own brand. Build up and 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 build up while you're building yourself up. Try to help build somebody else up too. try to teach somebody something. 
And and as you learning how to run your business and, and do your thing, uh, and you help someone else and you teach them, it's going to solidify it in your mind. And guess what? It's also going to prove your self-esteem because self-esteem is increased by doing esteemable acts. So an esteemable acts are those things that you do that you can look at and feel and feel good about yourself about. Right. Um, so help to build other people up and not tear them down. But that's what we do as a community. We want to tear people down. We want to find the most negative things to say and do uh, with other people. Right. And again, this thing, it comes back as a loop. Right. And so we just stay angry. With greater emotional control, you would understand that there are certain things in life that you really cannot control. You accept these and you move on. That's right. You get over them. And by focusing on the things that you can control, this inner space of peace, calm and serenity continues to grow. And again, excuse me, some of you that may be in recovery you know, substance abuse recovery, you know, you may, uh, you know, you're probably familiar with the serenity prayer, right? So you, and you, you're familiar with distinguishing between the things that you can and cannot control. So you want to know what you can and can't control because, and, and the thing, other thing that keeps us angry because we focus so much time on things that we have no say so or control over. Yes, they're bad things. Yes, they, um, uh, have caused us harm or whatever the case may be. But if you can't do anything about it, what the am I, I'm going to keep talking about it for if I can't do anything about it? Let me focus on the things that I can actually do something about. Right. And with that said, I say in most situations, let's say you're in an argument with somebody or you have a, a, a personal issue with one of your friends or somebody that you don't even like or know. Right. It's always better to try to figure out what was your part in that, right? So again, you could say the person is mostly at fault, right? Because most of the time, that's what we do. We say, um, we figure out what the person did or said to us or about us or whatever. And um, that's why we stay angry with the person. That's why we had a resentment or whatever, right? But it's more helpful and beneficial to me if I can figure out what was it that I did to contribute to this situation and make it go sideways, right? And if I can work that thing out, again, it don't matter how much fault the other person had. I can't do nothing about them. I can't change them. I can only change me. So if I can change that part that I did to, to uh, make the situation go bad, then I can change the whole situation and potentially prevent it from ever happening again if I choose to continue to communicate with this person. So I may choose not to continue to communicate with this person, but even then it is beneficial for me to figure out what was my part so that I don't repeat this situation with somebody else in the future. And interestingly enough, your sense of control grows with it. So your sense of control grows because you, you, you begin to realize that, okay, now I'm focusing on things that I actually can control, right? Instead of focusing on things that I can't control. And, and that's what we do. We stay angry over shit that we can't do nothing about. 